So question 4a, we need the Pythagorean theorem. We'll go over that now and we'll also use the same theorem for question 4b, right? So the Pythagorean theorem goes like this. If you have a right angle triangle, now a right angle triangle, a triangle is the shape of three sides. Okay, a right angle tri triangle, okay, it has a right angle, like a perfect corner. Okay, and there's all sorts of ones you can draw, you know. But as long as it has a, a perfect corner, it's a right angle triangle. And we'll call the sides A, B, and C. These are the numbered lengths, the lengths, okay. If you have a right angle triangle, then if you look at this long side, now this long side C is called the hypotenuse, okay. And that's directly opposite of the of the right angle. It always will be in a right angle triangle. So I'll just give you some examples. I mean, you know, you could have you could have a skinny one like this, you know. And here's the right angle. And where's the hypotenuse on this one? Sorry, where's the hypotenuse on this? It's, it's this side here, isn't it? Okay. If you had one that was going like, um, whoops, that, and this is a right angle. Where's the hypotenuse on this one? Hypotenuse, the long side is here is directly across from the right angle. Okay. Anyway, so there's all sorts of different right angle triangles you can have. But um, the point is that if you have a right angle triangle, then the long side squared equals uh, the other two sides squared and added. Right. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and it's as simple as that. Okay. So um, and that's it. I mean, you can write a sentence like, "If you have a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse squared equals the sum of the other two sides squared." Uh, you know. So anyway, but but there we have it. That's the Pythagorean theorem. Why is it useful? Well, if you're building, I'll give you. If you're in construction, here's one thing you can do. If you're, you're just making a garden shed or whatever, and you want to get a perfect corner, because one implies the other. If you want to get a perfect corner, here's what you can do. You can drive in a stake, and you can. Uh, this is where you want the corner of your shed, okay, on the ground, and then you can measure across um, three feet or longer, and drive in another stake, okay, uh, and and then you want the the other side of the shed to come down here. Well, measure four feet, right, and, and as long as you put this stake to where. You also measure from here to here with twine or whatever, and as long as this distance also measures five feet, okay. If you can manage to get uh, three stakes in and, and have twine going around and have this be four feet, this five, and this three, if you can do that, then believe it or not, this will be a perfect corner. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to create a perfect corner, a perfect right angle here, and the reason is because. That's the hypotenuse, and believe it or not, 5 squared equals 4 squared plus 3 squared. So this is a famous right angle triangle, where one length is 5, the other is 3, and the other is 4. If you want to be really accurate, you could even do, make this one, you know, 6 feet, and this 8, and this 10, and that would also work out, because you're just doubling the, the lengths, but it's the same uh, shape. Anyway, watch this. See, 5 squared is 25. And that's equal to 16 plus 9, isn't it? See, 25 equals 25. So that's one uh, quick application of the Pythagorean theorem. And there's many, many others, of course. So there we go. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we will try and solve question 4a. Find the hypotenuse of a right angle, right triangle, if one side equals 7 feet and the other equals 5. Okay, so I'll draw the triangle. Here's one side is 5, the other is 7, okay? And we've got to find the hypotenuse. So that implies that the hypotenuse, and you always, whenever you're solving any of these things, always draw it, okay? The hypotenuse is the side that's across from the right angle, okay? And we have to find this length. So give me a letter, any letter at all. A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever. I'll just take X. But, well, this is the one we have to find. Or you could say H or whatever. Anyway, the point is we have to find this side, okay? We have the other two. Using the Pythagorean theorem, which we discussed, we have that the long side squared equals the other two sides squared and then added, okay? 
So the long side is x, the hypotenuse is x, so we have x squared is equal to 5 squared plus 7 squared. Okay, and that's an equation. Now we can solve it. Now we can solve this. Okay. So x squared equals what? 35 plus 49. What's that? So we have x squared equals what? 84. Okay. Now what do we do? Get the how do we undo a squared? How would you undo a squared? What's the inverse operation to squared? The inverse operation is square root. If you square root both sides. Okay. Technically you should put in plus or minus whenever you square root both sides. I don't know if, if you've heard that before. But root of x squared is x and technically that's equal to plus or minus. And root 84 is what? To get your calculator, the square root of 84. Okay. 9.1651. Okay. And because we're dealing in feet here and it didn't ask us how to round it, I'm just going to round this to the nearest tenth. Okay. And because we're dealing in length, like this is supposed to be feet. The question is, how could you have a negative? How could you have a negative nine point something feet? You know, nine point one six uh, feet. Is that even possible? Right. So we can just because we're dealing with lengths, we'll just discount the negative answer and just stay with the positive nine point, and we'll round this to the nearest tenth. If you round that to the nearest tenth, what do you get? Nine point and one, and then six five, so it's nine point two feet, right? So x is approximately 9.2 feet. And you can see that's longer than the 7 and the 5. It looks about right, doesn't it? 9.2 about.